Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're tackling a really interesting challenge in drone tech. How do we make them truly agile? Hmm. Because, you know, conventional drones, they do amazing things, but their movement can be, well, a, a bit limited, especially in tight spots or when you need a super quick reaction. Yeah, that's right. A lot of it boils down to thrust. Exactly, thrust. And that seems to be a real bottleneck for getting that, you know, real nimbleness. It is. And just generating more thrust, you know, physics gets in the way. You end up needing bigger motors, heavier batteries. It's a trade-off. Right, which makes really agile flight, especially in complex places, a tough engineering nut to crack. Definitely. Okay, so let's get into this because the research we're looking at today has this uh, really clever workaround. It does. We're diving into a drone design that takes its cues straight from nature, specifically the flying squirrel. Ah, the flying squirrel. Yeah. The core idea is basically equipping a drone with foldable wings to seriously boost its maneuverability, its biomimicry, but aimed at sort of fundamentally rethinking drone movement. And what's fascinating, especially from an academic angle, is how they translate that. You know, how the flying squirrel uses its skin flaps for gliding, for control. Mm. This research really asks, can we copy that principle on a drone to get that same kind of aerial agility? It's a neat question. And it looks like the answer might be yes. So in this deep dive, we'll get into the nitty gritty, the mechanics of these wings, the um, sophisticated control system that juggles the props and the wings. The coordination is key. And some really advanced machine learning they're using to figure out the aerodynamics. We'll really focus on the academic breakthroughs, the genuinely new stuff here. Yeah, and this whole approach looking to nature, it's a growing trend in robotics. But this project stands out, I think, because of how deeply it integrates that biomimicry with, you know, cutting edge control theory and this data driven modeling. It's quite sophisticated. Absolutely. And by the end, you should have a really good picture of how this flying squirrel drone could mean big improvements in, say, following complex paths accurately, dodging obstacles. Things that are hard for standard drones. Exactly. And it's all backed up by simulations and real world flight. So ready to jump in. Let's do it. Maybe start with that biomimicry part. How exactly does the flying squirrel do its thing and how do they translate that? Good plan. Okay, the flying squirrel. So for those of us like me who haven't uh, closely studied rodent aerodynamics, how does it use its body like a wing? What's the trick? It's all about the patagium. That's the, um, the stretchy skin membrane between its wrists and ankles. Ah, oh, right. When it jumps, it stretches that out, massively increasing its surface area. It lets it glide, obviously. But crucially, it can tweak the shape and tension. Oh. Oh, interesting. To control its path midair. It's quite subtle control. Okay, so translating that to a drone, what does the hardware actually look like? No fur, I assume. Ha, huh, no fur. They design these controllable, foldable wings made from silicone. Silicone? Why silicone? It's lightweight, flexible, easy to manipulate. These wings are only about 24 grams total. Wow, that's light. Yeah, less than 5% of the drone's weight. They're mounted on these little carbon fiber crank arms. Okay. And tiny servo motors control the arms, folding and unfolding the wings. Keeping it lightweight seems critical, right? You don't want the wings themselves to hinder agility. Absolutely critical. You don't want to burden the main propellers. That low mass is a deliberate design choice. And the key idea, the reason this adds agility, is that deploying the wings creates extra air resistance. It's not like an airplane wing generating lift. Precisely. It's not for sustained flight. It's about using that controllable drag. Think of it like a dynamic air brake or a way to generate extra sideways force for quick turns or stops. Okay, that makes sense. And that's where the control system really has to shine. Right, so you've got this clever hardware, but you need a smart brain to make it dance. That's this thrust wing coordination control, or HWCC framework. That's it, the TWCC. Sounds like the heart of the control innovation here, academically speaking. It really is. It's the central controller. Its job is to optimally coordinate the normal propeller thrust with the forces from these foldable wings. It's a balancing act. Okay, so how does this balancing act work? Let's break down the components. There's a primary controller, PC, a wing operation event generator, WOEG, and a wing-informed integration controller, WIIC. What does each one do? Okay, let's start with the PC, the primary controller. Think of that as the drone's basic flight system. It uses standard stuff, uh, PID for position, integral backstepping for attitude. Attitude meaning it's orientation, right? Tilt, roll. Exactly. And it runs fast, 300 hertz. It handles the basic stability, the moment-to-moment -moment flying. So kind of the standard autopilot functions. Essentially, yes. But the key insight is that the PC alone hits limits, especially when you ask for really aggressive moves, maneuvers that need the drone to tilt further than it physically can. 
Ah, okay, so if the PC wants to say tilt 60 degrees, but the drone can only physically manage 45, that's where the next part comes in, the WAG wing operation event generator. Exactly. The WAG is like the wing strategist. It's constantly looking ahead, predicting if we deploy the wings now, would it actually help achieve the movement the PC wants? How does it figure that out? It compares the drone's current orientation, its normal vector, with the aerodynamic force it estimates the wings would produce if deployed. So it's checking if the wing force would push in the right direction. Precisely. If the Bowie G calculates that wing deployment would be beneficial, maybe help turn faster or slow down, it raises a flag, like saying, hey, wings could be useful here. Got it. So the WI identifies the opportunity. What triggers the actual wing use? That's the WIC, the, the Wing Informed Integration Controller. Yes, the WIC stepped in when two things happened. One, the PC is demanding an attitude angle that's beyond the physical limit. Two, the WIC has raised that flag saying wings would help. Okay, so the WIC takes the command. What does it do differently? Right, it sort of overrides the PC's extreme command. Instead of trying to force that impossible angle, the WIIC basically says, okay, hold the angle at the maximum possible limit. Right. And now let's regulate the propeller thrust and deploy the wings. It uses the aerodynamic force from the wings, the force the WIG predicted, to actually achieve the maneuver the PC wanted. Ah, so instead of just tilting more, it uses the wings as an extra control surface to get that pusher braking effect. Exactly that. And this coordinated action lets the drone do things that would be impossible or unstable with just propellers. Okay. And this leads to something the researchers highlight as a key academic contribution, expanding the drone's controllable acceleration set. Controllable acceleration set. Break that down for us. Sounds important, but a bit abstract. Think of it like this. It's the total range of ways the drone can accelerate, speed up, slow down, change direction. A normal drone is limited by its propellers. Right. By adding these wings, controlled smartly by the TWCC, the drone gains the ability to create forces, especially sharp vertical forces, that a wingless drone just can't manage. It expands the envelope of what's possible dynamically. So it can make sharper, more abrupt changes in movement. Yes, particularly useful for things like sudden stops or dodges. That expansion of capability is a core academic point here. That's a really clear way to put it. Okay, the TWCC framework is impressive. But for it to work, especially with these floppy silicone wings, you need to know how those wings are going to behave aerodynamically, right? Yeah. Which brings us to the modeling part, using this physics-assisted recurrent neural network, the pair nn That's a mouthful. It is, but it's tackling a really tricky problem. Trying to write down exact physics equations for how flexible silicone wings deform in airflow, it's incredibly difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. Unlike a stiff airplane wing, these things must bend and flutter in complex ways. Totally unpredictable with standard models. So they turn to machine learning, specifically a recurrent neural network, an RNN. Why an RNN? RNNs are good at handling sequences of data, like the changing state of a drone over time, and modeling dynamic systems, so it seems like a natural fit for learning wing behavior during flight. Okay, so the RNN learns the link between the drone's movement, the wing position, and the forces produced, just from flight data. Almost. They did something even smarter. Instead of a vanilla RNN that just learns from data, they built in some fundamental physics principles into the network structure. How does that work? They incorporated basic aerodynamic knowledge, specifically principles related to flat plates moving through air, as a kind of prior knowledge for the network. Uh, That's the physics-assisted part, the pair and N. They fuses the data-driven learning with known physical laws. This is a really novel aspect, academically. That sounds really powerful. Why bother with the physics part? What's the advantage over just letting a standard RNN learn everything? Several big advantages. First, embedding physics makes the pair and N more robust. It's less sensitive to noise or weird biases in the flight data it learns from. Okay. Second, it's more sample efficient. It needs less flight data to learn an accurate model, which saves time and effort in testing. Right, less trial and error flying. Exactly. And maybe most importantly, scientifically speaking, it helps prevent overfitting. Overfitting, where it learns the training data perfectly but can't handle new situations. Precisely. The physics provides guardrails, helping it generalize better to conditions it hasn't seen before. The researchers actually quantified this. Oh, yeah. They showed the parent end significantly reduced the, the RMSE in predicting the aerodynamic forces. We're talking improvements of at least 24%, up to over 70% compared to a standard RNN. That's a huge jump in accuracy. Wow, 70%. That's massive. And this parent end, it's not too computationally heavy. It has to run on the drone itself, right? Correct. That was another key constraint. They designed it to be lightweight enough to run in real time on the drone's onboard microcontroller. It runs at 10 hertz, feeding its predictions right into the TWCC system. 
that's seriously impressive, taking this advanced ML and making it work on a small, resource-constrained drone. Okay, so we have the cool biomimetic design, the smart TWCC controller, and this accurate pair and N model. But does it all actually work? Does it fly better? The million-dollar question, that's where the validation comes in simulations and real-world tests. Right. What do the simulations show first? They ran extensive simulations, testing how well the drone could follow specific paths, varying things like how sharp the turns were, how fast it was going. And the results. Consistently, the drone with the pairing end based TWCC did much better than a wingless own, and also better than a version using a simpler non-learning model for the wings. It just tracked the desired paths much more accurately in simulation. Did they test it in more complex scenarios too, like with obstacles? They did. They created a simulated forest environment, lots of randomly placed obstacles. Again, the Paranan TWCC drone had a much higher success rate navigating through it without crashing. What was the success rate? About 90.5%, significantly higher than the other configurations they tested. It really showed the benefit in simulation. Okay, simulations look good, but reality bites, right? What happened in the actual flight tests? Right, they flew the drone in the real world, pushing it to its fastest stable speed, around 7.3 meters per second. Yeah. And interestingly, the improvements were even more noticeable in the real flights compared to the simulations. The tracking performance boost was more pronounced. Why would that be? Any theories? Well, one really interesting observation came during obstacle avoidance. The standard wingless drone tended to dip to lose altitude when making sharp turns. Okay. The researchers think this might be related to the battery, maybe not delivering peak power instantly for really aggressive rotor commands. Ah, power sag, maybe? Potentially. But the Flying Squirrel drone, using its wings, managed to maintain altitude much better during those same maneuvers. So the wings were providing that extra control force without draining the battery quite as much. That seems to be the implication. It suggests the wings can compensate, adding maneuverability without hitting those power limits as hard. A potential real-world bonus. That's fascinating. And the overall tracking numbers, the errors, were lower in the real world, too. Yes, they provided specific RMSE values in their results, showing quantitatively lower tracking errors for the parent NTWCC drone compared to the baseline wingless drone and the model-based wing controller across the real-world trials. Okay, so pulling this all together, what are the big academic takeaways, the main innovations this research offers to the field? I think there are two really central academic contributions. First is the Paranen itself. Developing and proving out this noise-robust, physics-assisted neural network for learning complex, flexible wing aerodynamics. That's a significant step forward in modeling tricky physical systems with ML. Okay, the Paranen method, what's the second? The second is the TWCC algorithm, the control framework. Designing this sophisticated controller that explicitly uses the learned wing model from the parent N to coordinate thrust and wing forces. That integration is key. It's what enables that expanded controllable acceleration set we talked about. Right, the synergy between the learning and the control. Exactly. It's this combination of biomimetic design, the advanced data-driven modeling, and the sophisticated control strategy that really pushes the boundaries here. It's a great example of integrating multiple advanced techniques. Yeah, it really feels like a holistic approach. That ability to generate those extra forces, especially vertically, feels like it could unlock new ways for drones to move. It definitely opens up possibilities for more dynamic and precise operation, especially in tricky spots. Okay, so let's wrap up our deep dive. What are the essential points to remember about this flying squirrel drone? I'd say the main takeaway is that this combination, the biomimetic wings, the peri -N model, the TWCC control, genuinely delivers significant improvements, better agility, better path tracking, better obstacle avoidance compared to standard drones. The evidence from both simulation and real-world tests is pretty compelling. And the innovative parts are really that blend. Drawing from nature for the mechanics, using advanced AI for the tricky aerodynamics, and designing a smart control system to make it all work together seamlessly. The academic rigor in connecting these pieces is really impressive. It really is. It shows the power of bringing different fields together, biology, robotics, AI, control theory. So as a final thought for everyone listening, think about where drones like this could take us. Imagine search and rescue in collapsed buildings, much more detailed inspections inside complex machinery, maybe even super agile delivery drones in cities. The potential applications are definitely exciting. These academic steps, these innovations in control and learning could really pave the way for a whole new generation of aerial robots. It makes you wonder what other lessons we can learn from nature and combine with our technology. Really fascinating stuff at the intersection of biology, control, and AI. It certainly is a very promising direction for aerial robotics.